They speak the jargon of space flight. More important, they understand it. They thrill to model rockets that streak skyward several thousand feet in seconds. Hey, it clear? Cleared. Bring safety to go. Tracking? Tracking east. Ready. Tracking west. Go ahead. Tracking is go. The range is clear for launch. Counting from five. T minus five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Man, this one's headed for the moon. What I'd like to know is how the astronauts eat. How do the astronauts eat? A good question, a basic question, and one that's asked many times by many people. And with our sights now set on the moon and beyond, the question of mealtime aboard an orbiting spacecraft raises still another provocative question. How many meals to the moon? Solving the problems of food preparation, packaging, storing, serving, and disposal is the challenge given to the Life Support Department of the Whirlpool Corporation, working in cooperation with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration Manned Spacecraft Center. Now, if you're like me, you probably associate the name Whirlpool not with space, but with fine quality home appliances. Entire kitchens, contemporary as today, as forward-looking as tomorrow. With that kind of know-how, it's small wonder that Whirlpool is uniquely suited to feed America's astronauts. Its space food management system was thoroughly tested and proved in the Gemini program, during which our astronauts lived in space for lengthy periods, performed daring maneuvers requiring peak physical condition. And returned to Earth's environment in sound health and good spirits. First, the environment of space itself. An orbiting spacecraft travels in nothingness, an all-encompassing silence. No air, no gravity, no up, no down. That makes orientation to familiar base points somewhat difficult. Explorers have always had to wrestle with the problem of how to pack sufficient food for their ventures. Space exploration is no different. Within the spacecraft, volume and weight limitations are extremely critical. Food supplies must be lightweight, compact, and carefully fitted in. For the three-man crew of the Apollo mission, enough is needed for a 14 to 16 day flight, and the food must not require refrigeration or cooking. The space food system has to be reliable under the millions of pounds of thrust during acceleration. And it must withstand space vacuum as well as cabin decompression. Now let's consider the astronaut's physical and mental state. The crew must live and work within a self-contained Earth-like environment, each member requiring full body energy peak physical health, and a good mental attitude. For this, he requires balanced nutrition, not a drastic change in diet that could affect health and spirits. That's why a wide variety of nutritious foods, over 50 different items, is prepared and processed. Each is selected to please tastes and satisfy appetites. Just as you and I, astronauts enjoy best food which retains its original color, taste, and texture. So they're given a menu, and within certain limitations, they choose their own food.
To process that food, to develop food, water, and waste disposal systems, Whirlpool devoted months of Apollo-oriented research and development in its completely modern facilities. Although the emphasis is on meals, mealtime as we know it takes on quite a different aspect in space. Because of the attention-demanding nature of their work, the concentration needed, crew members do not eat at the same time. Although a spacecraft orbits the Earth in about 90 minutes, going from night to day to night again with bewildering rapidity, the traditional concept of breakfast, lunch, and dinner is retained. Menus are planned on the basis of man meals per day. For example, day two, meal B, is lunch, with each crew member's meal individualized. Let's check out meal C, day one, before processing for space travel. Orange grapefruit drink to start the meal, sliced roast beef with brown gravy, potato salad, and for dessert, chocolate pudding and chocolate brownies. Now let's see how this meal and others like it are prepared for an Apollo mission and for the astronauts' enjoyment. There are two basic types of freeze-dried foods used in an Apollo mission. Rehydratable food, food that must be reconstituted with water. Creamed corn, shrimp cocktail, chicken salad, and butterscotch pudding are examples. And solid bite-sized cube foods, which are eaten directly from the package. Toasted bread and fruit cereal cubes are examples. Let's first consider a rehydratable item. How about a flavorful fruit salad? The fruit is diced carefully so as to retain texture. Plump Michigan peaches and pears from the heart of America's fruit belt are mixed with pineapples and cherries. The fruits are then blended, a flavor blend, a color blend. Next, the fruit salad is weighed to exact portion size then molded into bars for convenient packaging. The bars are quick frozen, then removed from the molds and freeze dried. Freeze drying doesn't change the shape, color, or taste, but the removal of moisture makes the food lighter and freeze-drying helps it keep without refrigeration. Now let's see how bite-sized foods are processed. How about strawberries and cornflakes? First, the sugar-coated cereal is mixed with freeze-dried strawberries and other wholesome ingredients. The mixture is then pressed into cubes of specific size and weight. Each cube is checked carefully for go or no go. Then each is hand dipped into a special gelatin coating designed to hold crumbs to a minimum. After fast freezing, the cubes are freeze dried, then placed into containers for interim storage. Each freeze-dried item is put into a special four-ply package. The color-coded packs are then placed in spacecraft food storage compartments that conform to the shape of the command module. Finally, the compartments are readied for shipment, either to the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston for astronaut training, or, when an Apollo mission is scheduled, directly to the launch site. As the meals arrive in their storage compartments, they are loaded aboard the Apollo command module and stowed in the special area provided in the crew compartment. Enough food can be stowed here for the Apollo mission three-man crew. Compared to Gemini, the Apollo command module provides a lot more room and what might be called its own galley in the food preparation area. But I still want to know, how, how do, do they, they eat? eat? Well, the answer to that is the way the food is packaged. Packaged? What do you mean by that? Well, this astronaut is ready to chow down. And being in a zero gravity condition, it'll be like trying to eat while floating weightless. Once in orbit, 
when the crew compartment is pressurized, he can stow his spacesuit and do his work and eat in his constant wear garment. First, he removes his own color-coded man meal package. He's decided to start off with a fruit salad, like the one we saw prepared earlier. The fruit salad package, as with all rehydratable foods, has an injection valve at one end and a sealed eating tube at the other. Now he's set to add water in order to reconstitute the food. Of course he'd use hot water with meats and with other foods which taste better when eaten warm. But this being fruit salad, he inserts the cold valve nozzle of the metered dispenser into the package and injects cold water. He knows exactly how much to add because it's printed on the package label. As he removes the package, the valves in the water dispenser and the package seal themselves, preventing any spillage. Now, using the package as a flexible mixing bowl, he allows it to soak for the time noted in the instructions. The rehydrated fruit salad is now ready to be eaten and enjoyed. Because he has no dishes or silverware, he must also use the package as a food dispenser in this zero gravity stage. It's simple. He just squeezes the food into his mouth through the eating tube. He eats his entire meal in this fashion, other fruits, meats, and vegetables. And then for dessert, gingerbread. He doesn't have to prepare this bite-sized food. He eats it in a normal fashion. He keeps his mouth closed while chewing, however, so that no crumbs can float away. A loose crumb, if inhaled, could cause choking or might cause malfunctions in the sensitive electronic equipment. After eating, he inserts a special germicide pill into each package that contained rehydratable foods. This retards bacteria growth and odors from any leftover foods. He then stores used packages in the waste storage space. Finally, he cleans up with a specially treated face cloth, which leaves no lint. A meal at the Waldorf? Well, not quite, but it's a giant step forward in space food management systems. When he's thirsty, he puts the nozzle of a metered water dispenser gun into his mouth and injects the water. Each squeeze of the trigger dispenses a half ounce of drinking water. Between meals, this space pioneer of today may chew a stick of sugarless gum to tide him over. But these young Americans are the space pioneers of tomorrow, limited only by their imaginations. Boys now, but theirs may well be the future task of probing ever deeper into the vastness of our solar system planets such as Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn.